All right, guys, red alert to World Series action coming at you here. We got an exciting one today. I, I say that every day, but today I actually really mean it. I mean, I mean it every day, but today you guys get what I'm saying. So we got Yuri's Revenge. We got two of the best players in the world. We got Marco in red out of Finland, top left here. We got Legend uh, in yellow, bottom right. Marco, of course, the GOAT, a.k.a. the final boss. Legend, the God of Thunder. Uh... And so now here's what's exciting about this, guys. Not only do we have two of the best players in here about to bang out best of seven regular Yuri's Revenge, but we also have a blind map. A blind map, guys. So this is not a wacky map. This isn't an Ivor map. There's nothing crazy. This is just a classic tournament map that Polly made. Polly's uh Polly's one of the bigger map makers right now. He's cranking out awesome maps, tournament level, pro level maps, um, practically on a daily basis right now. So he's responsible for a lot of the maps in Quick Match. And so he had this new map he was showing me, and I was like, has anyone ever seen this map, Polly? He said, no. I said, let's get a couple of the best players in the world, let's put up a cash prize, and let's get them to bang out blind on the map. So they have no idea what's going on. Now, at the top level, it's, an, it's, it's important to appreciate really what that looks like at the top level. Some of you guys think, you know, maybe you guys play casual Red Alert 2, maybe you don't know a lot of the maps, maybe that's normal for you. At the top level, the build orders, right? Where you build on a specific map, how you place your refinery, what you do, um, it's very dialed in. The pros have a very specific meta for each map. They've played each map countless times, and uh, they know exactly what they're doing on it. So making them play the map blind is kind of a fun way to add a little spice to life, uh, give us something interesting to see here. And of course, uh, additionally, we're mixing things up with the mixed factions. So these guys are going to be running Soviet versus Allied, swapping that back and forth twice, and then going over to... Oh! Legend gets over and steals Marco's uh, oil. <laughs> Marco calls him a weasel. So Legend gets over and grabs that oil. We are playing with uh we are playing with uh multi-engineer is on. So multi-engineer is on, so you can't capture each other's buildings, but you can capture each other's tech. So now a little pillbox sentry battle. Um yeah, and Legend's gonna pull ahead there. That's very, very annoying. Um, so, sorry guys, this is mixed factions, so Soviet versus Allied, we're going to see back and forth a couple times, and then we're going to go over to Soviet versus Yuri, we'll be getting Yuri in here as well, so, um, yeah, it should be fun, different mix-up factions, we've got a new map, I'm excited about it, can you guys tell I'm excited? Yeah, you guys, you guys know, you guys know, it's Sunday, it's Sunday, you guys are half asleep, you guys know though, you guys feel it in your blood. All right, so both players, pretty big economies. Uh, although Legend now over to Battle Lab, early Battle Lab here. And there is a spy out now for Legend. So Legend going to go for an early spy. He's pushing this early Battle Lab. Again, this is Yuri's Revenge. So, you know, regular Red Alert 2, any of you guys less familiar, regular Red Alert 2 plays a little bit faster. The tanks build faster. Um, and so... You, you generally see a lot more like Grizzly Rhino battles early on. Yuri's Revenge incentivizes teching up, hold, uh, pushing back and slowing down a little bit. And so that's what you see here from Legend. Legend going no uh, no Grizzlies, you know, right over to Battle Lab, right to Mirage Tanks. Um, now, the big thing is this spy is huge, you guys. If the spy gets in a War Factory and Legend starts building veteran Mirages, um, it'll pretty much be the end of the game. So it should be interesting to see here. So finally, Marco has to go down and deal with this oil. So annoying. And while he's doing that, Legend gets on the backside. Oh, and he gets the spy in. Absolutely devastating. Absolutely devastating. So both these players, um, you know, like I said before, you know, Marco, there's a reason we call him the GOAT. He's been um, dominating at the top level in that number one spot for years now. Uh, so Marco, you know, uh, are, you know, the best player to ever do it. There's some, some people say there's a new player out of China, if you guys are unfamiliar. Woody's been around for a few years now, and Woody's very dominating. But uh, Marco's timeline of how long he's dominated for is what earns him that title as the GOAT. Now, of course, Legend, uh, Legend in pretty much everyone's top three, um, you know, in both Red Alert 2 and Yuri's Revenge, a very strong player as well. Both these guys definitely prefer Soviet, but at this level of gameplay, um, you're going to be pretty comfortable with both factions. So, Legend definitely getting some things done here with Allied uh, and these um, these vets who so have vet BF out. So, you see the Navy SEAL going in the BF here. Now, that's to counter the, the, uh, the, uh, the Deso Bomb. This flak track is full of Desolators. Uh, what Marco wants to do here is get that Desolator right in the heart of Legend's army and try to get that uh, those Desolators deployed. Uh, the Desolators hard counter these Mirage tanks in these positions. All those Mirages will almost immediately pop uh, with an effective Deso Bomb here. Now, uh, but Legend does have that BF. Um, that BF Navy SEAL will gun down those Desolators uh, fairly quickly. Yeah, you see that Navy SEAL doing work on those Desolators. So it's a tricky position. Um, you know, Legend was able to get over to Tech early. He's now out with uh, Chronosphere. He's got his Ore Purifier, and he's got that spy in so he's just uh pumping these vet units he's gonna run another spy and legend uh legend flexing a little bit here boys yeah legend flexing a little bit marco in trouble marco's still on um you know he's on desolator uh, radar tech now but 
no Iron Curtain, which is going to be a little bit tricky in this position. These Mirage tanks, the BF, and of course the fact that he's building vet units uh, thanks to that uh, thanks to that spy. And another spy coming now. I'm not sure what he's going for. It takes the radar. Oh my god, he just took the radar. Any of you guys unfamiliar? Uh, any of you guys unfamiliar with uh, with spy? Holy shit, Paul! Paul, Paul Timmer, just give me a hundred dollars, Paul. Paul, my guy, my guy, a hundred dollars coming in. Sorry, man. Sorry for the delay. I was so excited. There's so much going on. A hundred dollars coming in, my guy, my guy. That's going towards next month's uh, prize pool. We're running tournaments every month, guys. You know how it goes. RA to the moon. More people watching, streaming, and playing Red Alert too. And that money, man, that helps me keep fuel in the rocket. The more money that comes in, the more money that I can give out to the players. All the money that comes in goes back to the players to help me create content. Paul Timmer, um, truly, 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 truly. Appreciate it, man. Thank you very, very much. So, uh, with that, a uh, little more fuel in the RA2 rocket, as if I could be even more excited right now. Grizzly tanks hop up on the top side. Now, once you go, it's interesting. Generally, for an allied player, you don't want grizzly tanks. Like, early game, you saw Legend go right into his Mirage tanks. But once you get a spy in, the grizzly tanks actually become a very viable unit because they start going elite. And elite grizzlies, they're fast. They get a lot of work done. You look at them just melting these rhinos right now, melting those harvesters. And Marco on the ropes right now. And the offensive chronosphere from Legend. Legend. Dude, these guys are putting on a show for us right now. Uh, sorry, I, I and I got distracted there. The Elite BF is out, um, and Marco quits out. Legend, God of Thunder, puts the first one on the board. All right, guys, so now over to point number two. In that first one, I mean, I got a little bit distracted. We had the donation, a lot of things going on. Uh, what I think what I missed to saying was, so Legend got the Spy into the War Factory. Of course, uh, his tanks started coming out with vets. That's huge. Um, now, the Spy also got into his radar. So if you spy your opponent radar, their whole map goes black. Now, early game... When the map's empty, both players send dogs around at the top level, and they have the whole map scouted pretty effectively early on. Once the game develops, though, it can be very difficult to get that late-game scout, particularly as a Soviet player. They don't have air units. They don't have a spy satellite. So getting your radar um, spied and going black like that is really, really difficult. Um, so Legend getting in, pulling off a few maneuvers. I mean, starting off with that oil hit. Um, and then going over to the spies, very, very funny. So engineers making a run here. Uh, we do have no engineer eat on. The dogs can't eat engineers um, just to kind of remove the randomness of the early dog wars, which uh, many players, including myself, find quite frustrating. So this is a four-player map. So now we're going to see opposite corners. And again, this is mixed factions. So now we're going to see Marco over to Allied and Legend, uh, Legend over to Soviet. So... Again, both these guys, if you're unfamiliar, a couple of the best players in the world, definitely both uh, known for their, their Soviet gameplay, but uh, you wouldn't know it by that last game. Legend bringing out uh, all the tools in the kit for the allied player and just rolling through Marco there. So we'll see if Marco can repay the favor here and make something happen. Uh, so again, this is a blind map. Both these guys don't know the map. So, you know, something we might see early on in this series might not be viable later on in the series. That's just how it goes. I mean, we're going to be seeing the meta developed here uh, in real time. Um, and a quick reminder, guys, I am live right now on Twitch. Twitch is where I primarily stream. Looks like we got about 50 people watching on either YouTube or Facebook right now. RedAlert2.com slash live. Uh, I stream on Twitch almost every day. It's a lot more fun. There's more tools for you. There's predictions. There's way free, ways for you to win cash prizes. Um, and a lot of times I can't stream on multiple platforms because of lag issues. So if you're enjoying the content, definitely come over to Twitch. Um, we got a Navy SEAL out now for Marco. So the early Navy SEAL here, again, engineers are off. So if the Allied player does want to have some early uh, funny business, it's going to be a need to be a Navy SEAL. So he's going for, I thought he was maybe try to go for that oil. All right, and so Marco, very similar strategy here. Again, that's the very uh, standard for Yuri's Revenge Allied to go right into that battle lab if you can. Um, Okay, now just, yeah, so these Navy SEAL IVs early on, you know, there's a couple different things, you know, they can do a lot of different things, right? And not only do they have to be in your base taking buildings, even just driving around, right? It just is distracting. It's annoying uh, to constantly know there's a Navy SEAL IFV trying to come at you. So now uh, Legend, you know, the early Rhino advantage, that's what you expect to see from the Soviet player. He's going to come in here and try to get something done. And the dogs... Oh, sorry, not dogs, uh, spies. So that's a spy IFE as well. So now you've got the Navy SEAL IFE, you've got the spy IFE. Legend goes right for this oil. That's going to cut off that expansion. And this is pretty good value right here, actually. Oh, and he counters that spy as well. Uh, he's going to lose that oil. And, Leg and uh, Marco just kind of giving up that oil. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, ooh, that Navy SEAL could have got that War Factory, I think. But he got a little bit confused. So uh, Marco doesn't get the Navy SEAL in. Legend does get the oil, 
And uh, so a little bit tricky. I mean, that's what you want for the Soviet player. Try to control them a little bit. Try to slow things down. But uh, the problem is, um, yeah, Marco over to that early battle lab. That was the same kind of thing Legend did to Marco last game and got the win with it. So this is a heavy production, though, from Legend. Legend's, pro Legend's firing on all cylinders, and he's already figuring out this map quick. Uh, he's, he's got you know nice build early on. Three refineries working hard. Four war factories out. See Marco trying to use his para drop in this uh, choke point to try to slow things down here and buy him a little bit of time to while well, he can more comfortably get into his tech. Marco, eh, both players pretty similar economic positions here. Neither player bottoming out, so production running full speed. Marco only on two war factories, but that's what you expect with that early tech push. Marco now going to be bringing a BF. You see the GGI's ready to rock and roll. Rocky's now out as well. Rockies are a little bit scary. Uh, for me right now for Marco. I'm not sure if he has the economy for that. Once you start pumping, you know, infantry and tanks, yeah, you see, well, both players bottoming out, though, to be fair. And a Harrier out for Marco as well, as well as a Chronosphere, first super weapon in play. Revo in the house. Yo, yo, yo. Legend goes right in, diving on those power plants. Now the BF over. Oh, the Desolator comes, but Marco, nice unit control, gets right out of range. Uh, the Desolator's still pushing in, though. Oh, and it was... He, he, he avoided those Desolators right away. Actually, yeah, still, still a nice hold there. Uh, that MCV... Needs to get that MCV repaired here. Didn't have much money in the bank at the time, so the, the repair may have stopped. But here come these tanks again, and Marco needs to repair that MCV. Marco might be trying to bait him a little bit here, taunting Legend, like daring him to try to go at that MCV. That's exactly... It's Is it... Is, did, did Marco just purposefully leave his MCV on fire to trick Legend to come? I'm not sure. Maybe. Maybe it was a mistake. Maybe it was a big brain move. We don't know for sure. Uh, Legend does hop bottom side with a couple Grinos and does get a few Miners. So, yeah... Uh, Marco's economy, yeah, I mean, there's, he's taken some hits here for sure, right? He's, uh, he's lost a couple miners, he lost that oil, which kind of cuts him off a little bit. As we move into a mid-late game, these ore patches are gonna, are gonna start diminishing, so, uh, Marco's gonna need to kind of try to find a way to get downfield, spread himself out a little bit, potentially get some offensive value, as the Soviet player now over to Battle Lab Tech, things get, uh, things get a little bit tricky. Um, you know, generally speaking, the longer the game goes, the more it goes in Allied's favor, but one condition there is certainly uh, the Allied's player ability, the way the map's playing, and the Allied uh, economy behind him. So eh, it's still a decent amount of ore. This patch still has quite a bit. So we'll see here. Uh, and again, Marco still using defensive para drops, not trying to sneak anything behind enemy lines. Legend going for an MCV move now. And you see, look at all these bunkers. Legend thinks Marco's going to be bringing the Navy SEALs. That's what those bunkers are for, anti-Navy SEAL measures. Um, this is actually kind of nice for Marco playing the higher ground here. I like this coming over this hill. Elevation advantages make a big difference. You get the first shots off. That's a lot of rhinos, though. And his BF's a little bit late to the party. The BF's radically slower. Oh, but not a... So he gets the he gets the Iron Curtain off, but not a great Iron Curtain at that. Only gets two tanks, luckily. Marco goes on the run now. Now Marco coming back. Uh, just a little bit of a, a little bit of a back and forth there as the Iron Curtain goes down. Luckily, that Iron Curtain didn't hit more tanks, but uh, Marco got on the run anyway. Marco now without BF, so the Desolators in this position can be incredibly tricky. Uh, again, the, the Desolators hard countering these Mirage tanks. You really need a BF. Um, oh, trying to use the Harriers to help deal with the Desolators. That's pretty heads up, but eh, it didn't work. Oh, the Rocky in to deal with the Desolators. I like that. Chronosphere out now. Now, in the last game, any map with water, the Chronosphere becomes an offensive weapon. Um, to be used against enemy tanks. Clicks down that, uh, that that elite came out. He clicked it down. And Marco now. Marco with some room to run. Maybe going to go for the Harvesters. Uh, yeah, so he goes for the Harvesters in position. Marco likes to do this. If Marco gets a leg up, a lower level player will start trying to dive on buildings. Marco will chop you off. He will bleed you dry, take all of your money, and then go for the MCV when you're ready to sell it, when you have nothing left to give anyway. Mirage is now pulling through, and the offensive iron uh, Chronosphere comes, grabs a couple miners. Uh, Legend now stuck trying to build sentry guns. Legend has the Iron Curtain ready, but uh, he's really got nothing to Iron Curtain. And Marco takes it home, and it's an allied map, apparently, boys. 1-1, one, one, both players winning allied. Ah! $200! Paul Timmer! That's amazing. That's amazing, dude. Uh, that makes you the, the single, uh, that's gotta be the single biggest donation in a stream of all time. I think we just hit our goal for February. We're above our goal for February! We got good news, boys. It's not going to be a $400 tournament in February. It's going to be a $500 tournament in February. We've got $50 even rolling over to March. Like I said, guys, Red Alert 2, man, RE2 World Series. We're doing it every month. All the different game modes, all the different divisions, different skill levels. Uh, money in, money out, boys. All that money is going back to the players towards more Red Alert 2 content.
Guys, over now to point number three. Point number three. Uh, yeah, someone's saying in the chat he could have chronoed the MCV. That would have been sick. Yeah, so it's interesting the way that the, the chronosphere... Um, the, the way the chronosphere works, uh, you know, if there's water on the map, right? If there's no water, you can still try to chrono drop people's tanks, like in exile. You could drop them up here or something. But generally speaking, uh, the chronosphere really opens up on maps with water, uh, which is kind of fun. Again, Paul Timmerman, I appreciate the support. $300 coming in today. Uh, my monthly goal right now is $400. We do $400 a month. Try to get that rounded up between donations and ads and stuff like that. So uh, that truly, truly helps, man. Yeah, I'd want this to be a consistent thing, man, month after month. And I want the prize pool to keep growing. Uh, you know, all the money I get from ads and stuff all goes back to the players as well. So, uh, you know, the YouTube and stuff is slowly growing. Uh, Twitch is slowly growing. And and with that, man, I'd love just to be able to get it big enough where I can start getting uh, getting money in ads, man. I'd love, I would love it, dude. Like, my goal in life is to be able to put in a title, be like, $1,000 Red Alert 2 World Series tournament. I want to give out $1,000 a month. Like, I would just be, and we could, you know, we could give, it would create so much incentive. You know, there's so many players where uh, a lot of these guys, man, they've been around so long. Like, they're, you know, money, money matters, man. Money incentivizes people. So, uh, yeah, it's been absolutely incredible the uh, generosity that we've already had from the community to get me here. Uh, this is, you know, we've ran 15 months in a row, 15 tournaments in a row. Um, and just, and it's just, we've had so many people be so generous. So, Again, Paul Timmerman, truly, truly appreciate all you guys who have donated and all you guys who support with just your unspoken love and support. The liking, the commenting, the subscribing, cracking jokes, uh, annoying me in the Twitch chat. No, I'm just kidding. Love all you guys. All right. So now, again, we're switching factions. Now, again, guys, these are mixed factions. Obviously, we're switching back and forth. Uh, so this is point number three. This is Soviet versus Allied again. So Legend again with Allied. Both Allies have won so far and fairly dominating. You know, I kind of thought there was a point in that mid-game where Legend was going to be able to win that. He did get some early value and tried to do a... He did a pretty good job containing Marco, which is what you have to do against the Yuri player... Or, sorry, the Allied player in Yuri's Revenge. Again, the early Battle Lab, the early Navy SEAL. So kind of similar metas here. Um... <laughs> Paul, <Timmer. laughs> Paul with another hundred dollars. He got four hundred dollars from Paul Timmer today. Oh my God, Paul! I'm quitting my job, man. I'm quitting my job. All the money goes back to the players. Like I'm not technically making money, but I'm still. I just with this much money coming in, I think I'm still gonna quit my job. Um, Paul Timmer, my guy, my guy. Oh, what else to say, man? Truly, truly appreciate it. Uh, there's a lot of players and a lot of Red Alert 2 content that is going to be fueled uh, by your generosity today. A lot of Red Alert 2 content going to be flo floating around the internet because of you. So, uh, so Navy Seal on this backside. This is a nice little tricky, uh, tricky little backdoor route. I like this. Radar out now for Marco. You see Marco with bunkers everywhere. So the bunkers counter the Navy Seal IFV. Uh, the bunkers should be enough firepower to destroy the IFV and kill the Navy SEAL before he can scramble over on foot to take out a war factory. Um, so, yeah, the Soviet, it's interesting, you know, uh, Yuri's Revenge, Yuri's Revenge Allied is much more viable. In regular Red Alert 2, uh, Soviet's definitely stronger, and Yuri's Revenge, obviously, you see this ability to get over to the early tech. A uh, big reason for that, again, is the, the lower build speed of the tanks in Yuri's Revenge, uh, which, you know, puts the Soviet player, doesn't give them that batch of rhinos quite as early in the game and allows the Allied player to go right into Mirage tanks versus having to pump Grizzlies to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Um, so, again, after this, we're going to run one more Soviet versus Allied right after this, and then we will be switching over to Soviet versus Yuri. So things will be getting a little nice and weird in here. Um, you know, love it or hate it, the Yuri thing. Some people love it, some people hate it, but we are going to see some Yovi... Some Yovi? Yovi, that's a new word. That's a that's Yuri Soviet. We're gonna see some Yovi matches. Yuri versus Soviet. That's a new acronym I just made up. Yeah, so what do you guys think about the maps so far, man? I really like Polly. I mean, these kind of maps, man, I make like small maps. It takes me days. It takes me a lifetime of thinking. Polly, man, like I said, man, this guy, he's just cranking out these uh tournament level maps, man. And they're beautiful. You know, they're not just like functional and fun and different, but they're also um works of art, you know, the little stuff. Look at this polar bear scratching his nose. That's fun. All right, so Legend gearing up a force once again here. Um, the Iron Curtain is out. Iron Curtain is, is absolutely huge here. Now, the Navy Seal, again, he has the BF with the Navy Seal to counter these Desolators. Without the Desolators, Rhinos can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mirages. They have to either use Desolators or use Iron Curtains. Uh, it's really just as simple as that. Oh, he killed the Polar Bear. Jesus, Marco. Okay, uh... Uh, yeah, we're not doing mirrored matches, actually. 
Uh, yeah, we're not doing mirrored matches. Yeah, so we're not doing mirrored matches. We're just doing switch switch factions. Uh, Legend and Marco, they both. Where Legend said he didn't really want to do AVA, and it kind of throws it off if you just do SVS. So anyway, that's just kind of how it goes. But um, I don't know. I like. I really like Allied versus Soviet. I think is, is kind of the funnest to see. I like Soviet versus Soviet. I don't really like Allied versus Allied. Um, okay, and he goes he goes right in. Iron Curtain ready. Iron Curtain ready. So it's all about how you bunch up the tanks. Look at that. Oh, that was almost a nine. The Iron Curtain. When you use the Iron Curtain. You know, there's so many of these things we talk about as you go up the ranks. I mean, you talk about a good player. You talk about top, top 20 in the world. If you want to go from top 20 to top 10, if you want to go from top 10 to top 5, if you want to go from top 5 to number 1, it comes down to the little stuff like how you use your Iron Curtain, when you use it, and how many tanks you get. And again, Marco gets behind enemy lines and is feasting on Harvesters right now. Um... Just oh, so he iron so oh, so he chronos down field. He chronos down field. He forces a defensive iron curtain. BF's now behind enemy lines, but Marco pulls back effectively here. And so even if Legend chases these rhinos out, Legend just lost so many miners, and Legend did not. Oh, and he saves the iron curtain. Holy shit. Marco just read Legend like a book right there. You saw both players kind of doing that dance in the middle of the map. And that's because they were both respecting each other's super weapons, right? Uh, Marco knew the Chronosphere was ready. Legend knew the Iron Curtain was ready. So both players were like, all right, what are you going to do? What am I going to do? So Marco sends it downfield, goes at the Miners. He sends t he has tanks back home to defend the Chrono Counterpunch. Um, and then saves the Iron Curtain to be used defensively. Uh, very, very nice. But he's not quite out of the woods yet here. Um, the ne Oh, yeah. Okay, now he is. So, Legend dead broke, of course. That economy was absolutely devastating. That hit to his economy was huge. And, uh, man, that's what, you know, these games like this, man, it's that crescendo, right? It's the back and forth, the tit for tat. And then it all comes down to that final decision. Uh, Marco choosing to go downfield. The defensive Iron Curtain combined with having tanks back home to defend uh, very, very nice. So, Marco, we do get our first Soviet win there. All right, guys. So, here we go over to point number four now. So, Marco was able to get that first Soviet win. Yeah, so, Ed, Ed in the chat here saying nine times out of ten, a player would have used the IC with those Mirages, right? And that was what Legend wanted. Legend wanted Marco to blow that IC early, and then Legend could go on the run, counterpunch with the Chronosphere, and probably could have won that game. So, for Marco to stare down those Mirages, go down, use the defensive Iron Curtain, um, yeah, that's one of those ones you could watch back a few times. An absolute work of art. Um, so over to point number four now. This is our last Allied versus Soviet. Then we will be switching over to Soviet versus Yuri. After this match today, we do have some Blitz action. That's my small map mod. If you guys haven't seen that before, we got Root versus Gunman. Uh, Root and Gunman, man, those guys those guys are nuts. They're incredible Blitz players, um, very aggressive players, and they always put on a show. So stick around for that as well as well. Quick reminder, guys, if you are watching this on YouTube... Uh, like, comment, and subscribe. It's free for you. It helps me immensely. Uh, the YouTube algorithm, just as of recently, about a month or two ago, after about a year and a half of hard work, the YouTube algorithm has finally decided that I am worthy of being put in front of new people. So the YouTube's gotten uh, some momentum lately. Uh, that's a big thanks to all you guys uh, over on YouTube who are liking, commenting, subscribing. All that stuff helps the algorithm, helps me, helps get Riddler 2 in front of more people. So uh, all that support's much appreciated, and it's definitely it's definitely shown. Like I said, the last couple months, the YouTube has grown quite a bit. And as a result, we're getting a lot of new players, a lot of new people watching, uh, which really does help the game. If you are catching this on Twitch or Facebook, definitely check out the YouTube. You know, I stream on Twitch a few hours a few hours a day, sometimes the games are good, sometimes the games are bad. I only take the cream of the crop, only the good stuff, only the very best games make it over to YouTube. So every other day, a video gets posted on YouTube, and uh, you can pretty much guarantee it's going to be a banger. If it's not a banger, it doesn't go on YouTube. So definitely check out the YouTube if you haven't before, if you need more of that Red Alert 2, uh, get more of your Red Alert 2 fix. So uh, he's coming over. Now, Legend does have an engineer in this flak. Oh, the Harrier misses. That would have been huge. Uh, so he does have a, an engineer in this flak. He's going to try to steal that oil. <laughs> Legend steals Marco's oil. <laughs> Legend gets over and steals Marco, Marco's oil. Now two rhinos right on the doorstep here. Rocky out to help defend, but still has the flak track to deal with it. The Harrier's going to take out that flak track. And again, the Harrier misses. That's one big argument from allied players is the uh, the miss rate of Harriers, which can be incredibly frustrating. And also kind of have a, uh, a coin toss uh, feeling to it, which is kind of the worst part in games when you feel like, uh, you can't really make it better or worse. To be fair, good players can make Harriers miss, but it's a good player can't really make a Harrier hit. Well, 
I'm sure someone will argue with that. But the point is there's a little bit of a coin toss involved. So now Legend has an outpost in Marco's base here. Uh, so Legend now, this, I love this aggression, and the barracks on the doorstep, boys. The barracks on the doorstep pumping conscripts right into his base using those rhinos. The Rockies are out, and Marco, Marco's using everything at his disposal. He has a defensive pair drop. He's using pillboxes. He's using his Harrier, but... Uh, this is a lot of pressure from a Soviet player, and this is exactly what the Allied player doesn't want early on. You saw Legend again going early Battle Lab. The cost of that early Battle Lab is early tank, is early production, and is the money that you need to hold. But the GI is pushing back now. That paradrop was absolutely huge. This barracks is going to get melted, and Marco, an absolute masterclass in holding. I'm going to be totally honest with you guys. I kind of just spaced out there. I kind of thought Legend was rolling through, and I was preparing a speech about uh, Legend's beautiful attack. And as I say that, uh, Mar now I need to prepare a speech about Marco's incredible hold. Uh, Marco now with Marco, Marco way out tanking here. Oh my God! Now the question is, was Legend able to keep up on the back end? And look at that. So the cost of this attack uh, was Legend's back end only on one War Factory here, not where he wants to be either production or economic wise. At uh, this point in the game, he put a lot into this expansion, and it's not just money, right? It's also the opportunity cost. Cost. It's the clicks per minute. You can only do so many things at one time. So Legend was all here. His attention was all here, and that's a big defensive advantage, right? So Marco was right here defending, but in the same way, he was able to keep up what he was doing with his macro. Legend put everything into this expansion, everything into that attack, and uh, Marco knows it. Marco going to head downfield here and look for a counter punch. Uh, Legend now out with the Desolators. Only way to hold this position against these Mirages. Now, the good news is the Desolators can get a lot done here. Doesn't have a BF, doesn't have that Navy Seal counter yet. So, um, yeah, definitely be able to get something done here. Desolator on the backside. So, Marco, the question is, ah, Marco doesn't have much of an economy here, though. Yeah, Legend's still, eh, Legend's gonna have, yeah, Legend's gonna have another wave of, of Rhinos coming here. Marco's economy's catching up. Oh my god, Legend still has this expansion, which is so annoying. So now a BF out. He's going GI BF. Let's see if he gets a Navy SEAL on to deal with these Desolators. And that's, um, you know, that's one thing. You know, a defensive holding a position and staying alive is one thing. Getting downfield and trying to make your opponent pay for it, trying to get the counterpunch, trying to get offensive value, that's another thing. So the BF going right in, so that's what the GI BF does a good job versus buildings. He's going to try to take out this expansion. This is just too annoying. Can't let Legend keep a foothold on his side of the map like this. Um, so here comes Legend again, and it's going to come down to the Desolators. We've seen this before. We'll see it again. These allied matchups, what the Desolator can get done in this exchange. Um, the perfect Deso Bomb will easily win for Legend. A botched Deso Bomb could easily swing things for Marco. I don't think there's a Navy Seal in this BF, so that can be a little bit annoying, but the GI BF uh, as well can help with Desolators. BFs are good because they can handle radiation. Um, yeah, you saw Legend want to try to take a bite, try to grab that BF, but uh, Marco too quick on the click there. And now Marco looking downfield a bit with his para drop. Uh, going to try to maybe try to cut off, try to pick off a couple of reinforcements if Legend was being sloppy there. You saw how quickly Legend deviated that tank, right? So that's a, that's a, that's a pretty heads up move. You put your GIs right there, right where Legend has his reinforcements coming from. Try to grab a tank or two without him noticing. Uh, Legend sees it though. Now Desolator's over to counter. All right, so now uh, Marco's economy is now caught up, but Legend's over to an Iron Curtain now. And Marco, that early pressure did put Marco a little bit behind here. Uh, Marco, no Chronosphere yet. We've seen the Chronosphere getting a lot of value so far on this map. The Iron Curtain out, and Marco slowly edging in here. And now you see things have shifted, right? And this shift right now, Legend giving up map control, of course, is because he's waiting for that Iron Curtain. If he can get the Iron Curtain, that's going to totally swing things here. So now the ball is a little bit in Marco's court. Marco's going to look to try to push things a little bit here and try to make something happen before that Iron Curtain comes out. If he can edge in, try to hit the power, try to hit the Iron Curtain, or potentially end the game here. Um, and look at Marco microing using this Engineer IFV. I, it, it's hilarious. Now, oh, the BF goes down. Desolator's now running free. So now Marco forced to retreat here. Um, the Desolator, there's just no way for this army to attack through Desolators right now. Harrier coming, but doesn't really have enough. Uh, Marco does get an MCV move on the backside, so he takes advantage of the map control that he has right now to posture up a little bit and get on some more uh, juicy ore patches. Lots more Mirages coming, uh, but Marco needs a couple BFs, man. Marco needs a Navy SEAL BF in this position. That's the counter we've seen so far in this series, but we're not seeing it from Marco right now. Um, yeah, you see Legend. Legend knows it, man. Legend's like, I will stall as long as, as long as I want. I know the Iron Curtain's coming. So now Iron Curtain is ready to rock and roll. Iron Curtain's ready. Ooh, and, and look at that. Marco up on that cliff there. 
Ooh, and those Mirages just got some very, very nice value. So, Legend, this is an annoying decision. And again, and those Mirages all over the place. It's very rare to see people actually tactically using the ability of the Mirages to turn into trees. And a little split on the top side. Again, Marco going out the Miners. We've seen him win several, uh, most of his games today uh, by doing this, chopping off those Miners. Mirage split on the backside from Marco. Very nice. Defensive Iron Curtain, but he's in the middle of the field. He's not going to get any offensive value. Marco has a two-way split. Mirage is behind enemy lines. Rhino's head downfield. And Marco with plenty of tanks to, to uh, defend this position. Plenty of tanks to defend. So Legend did not get the value he needed out of that Iron Curtain. Um, it's not to say that a defensive Iron Curtain is is the wrong is always the wrong move. Um, if you can defensive Iron Curtain and take out an attacking army, that's good value. But uh, that's why those splits there. So Marco's uh, nice map awareness there and just a good read on Legend. Um, uh, just, you know, that Iron Curtain was coming, so that's why Marco split his tanks up, right? The Iron Curtain can only be used on one force, so you start splitting up these little uh, smaller units, kind of spreading the Soviet player out, and uh, there's a couple ways to handle a split like this. You can try to split up all your tanks, or you can try to get all your guys together and roll through each split as they happen. Um, so Legend kind of keeping most of his tanks together. I don't think he's headed downfield, no. So he's keeping his tanks together. Marco, Marco's gotten pretty good value. That oil goes down, that refinery is going to go down. Legend's economy is struggling here, boys. This is going to be tough. He was able to micro some of those miners out of harm's way. He did save four miners, but a couple issues. One, it's refiner and not really ideal here. Eh, a little bit of ore. That oil going down. There's no miner down here anymore. Uh, Legend's in trouble. Marco 4K in the bank. And Marco with a lot of mirages on the field right now. Yep. Yeah, uh, yeah, Marco Marco just fully postured up. Um, yeah, it was a good early attack from Legend. Uh, you know, it did slow Marco down a little bit, but um, but just wasn't able to follow up on it. And that's what can be so frustrating in this game. Um, obviously, you know, it's it's nice that, you know, when you're talking about games, game design, you talk about board games, things like that, like the idea of, like, catch-up, you know, catch-up mechanics, catch-up likelihood. And there's feelings, you know, some games, it's like once you get ahead, there's no coming back. And those games can be very frustrating, right? Those are the kind of games you quit as soon as you get behind. Um traditional chess you make a wrong move you make a blunder you know you just you're very tempted to quit but um, it was very nice here to see that from Marco he held that early attack and was able to inch by inch get himself back in that game and of course that's why it can be um you know for these players like legend that early attack uh well he, he's just gonna be beating himself up a few things he could have done a few things differently right it was a razor thin margin um you know could have won that game early on with a few few different decisions or had marco made any mistakes which of course marco really didn't it was very all right guys so now we are over to point number five now point number five so yuri getting involved now marco gonna go yuri legend had the choice legend went soviet here so soviet versus yuri uh, we will switch these factions if the series goes on but it's best of seven so this could be the end of it strife with some gifted subs coming in my guy i appreciate it man you guys man you guys are making me you guys are making me a happy streamer today man we got uh, 200 people in here right now across uh, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch, which is the by far the most I have ever had live streaming at one time. Uh, truly appreciate it, guys. Truly, truly appreciate it, man. Um, this this whole thing—it's a community effort, man. The uh, the viewers, the streamers, the players, the donors—it's all got to come together synergistically to try to get RA to the moon. Uh, Jamal with a five dollar donation as well, my guy. I appreciate it. All that money going back to the players, guys. Um, I got some more fun events in mind. You know, this today, this mixed faction. Again, this was a brand new map. These guys didn't know the map, the mixed faction, stuff like this. Um, I want to do more of it, man. And the money, uh, the money really, really helps. Um, so I truly appreciate you guys. Someone on YouTube asking about downloading the game. If any of you guys do want to come play, uh, if you guys do want to come play the game, you should. Uh, come play. I highly recommend it. Highly, highly recommend it. Uh, so Red Alert 2, you can download the game, download CNC Net to play online. You can be up and running in 10 minutes, um, 10, 15 minutes. It's really easy. And we do have... We are getting a growing community of new players. You know, traditionally this game, it's a 20-year-old game. A lot of the guys who are still here are very hardcore. But um, I'm really trying to get together a community of new players. I hear it all the time. People say, Ivor, I haven't played in 20 years. I'm no good. I'm like, well, I'm not going to throw you against Marco. I'm not going to make you 1v1 the God of Thunder. Uh, you know, but we do have this community of, of new players. And we run every month. We run tournaments. We have divisions for brand new players. Like Division 5 is literally people who forget how to deploy their MCV. So regardless of your skill level, if you want to come join the fun, uh, join my Discord. All the answers to life. You can connect with me. You can ask questions. You can connect with the community. You can learn stuff. You can figure out how to download the game. If you're having issues, you can you can ask people. It is an old game. There is some annoying things that can happen early on. But realistically, uh, you can be up and running very, very quickly playing this game. And uh, every month, cash prizes, tournaments for new players. Um, come join the fun. We need more players, guys. We got to keep, keep the game going. Got to keep the game going. 
All right, uh, Zeppo with the follow. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. And you, comrade, joins us. So, uh, so this is Soey vs. Yuri. Again, it's best of seven, guys. Best of seven here. So, Legend fighting to stay alive. Legend fighting to give us a barn burner. Legend's got to got to get a little comeback going here, boys. Again, after the series, we are running uh, Root vs. Gunman. Root vs. Gunman. A uh, couple of killers. We're going to run some Blitz right after this as well. So, uh, don't go anywhere. The action's going to be rolling on. Of course, you guys wouldn't go anywhere right now. Legend's about to come back city and put on a show for us. Uh, so, Yuri... Yuri, Yuri, Yuri. What is there to be said about Yuri? Um, any of you guys unfamiliar with Yuri at the competitive level? I think a lot of people have experience playing Yuri as AI or in the campaign. Yuri at the competitive level um, is exceedingly difficult to use properly. Um, there's a lot of things you need to manage, the economy. There's a lot of different units that need to be managed. Now, once they are effectively running, once they get through the early game, they get their economy underneath them, and a good player is microing uh, the units effectively, um, Yuri is very, very, very difficult to beat. Allied versus Yuri is, um, to many people, unplayable. Uh, I know that can be argued, but Allied versus Yuri is incredibly difficult. So in this series, we're not even running Allied versus Yuri. Soviet versus Yuri, there's good back and forth, man. There's there's bangers all the time. There's top-level players who play Yuri, top-level players who play Soviet, and uh, we've seen these kind of matchups many times before, but they can certainly go either way. Uh, Marco, definitely a proficient uh, Yuri player. Not, like, known as a Yuri player, but, like I said, Marco's, you know, uh, the greatest player of all time obviously he knows how to how to figure out all the uh, all the different factions so the discs cause a lot of issues here the big thing you're gonna be seeing from a soviet player in a yuri versus soviet matchup is the flak tracks flak tracks help deal with the discs they're also really good against uh, mind control units the mastermind is oftentimes the juicer in the yuri force the mastermind can take over up to three units at a time once it takes over the fourth unit it'll start taking damage so you try to overload it with flak tracks. Your flak tracks shoot each other, but it's not that big of a deal because it's like they're throwing snowballs. Ooh, nice Iron Curtain gets some drones and gets some tanks. He's going to split off and head downfield. I'm surprised I not see the drones. I'm surprised I not see the drones go somewhere else. He goes right for the War Factory. going to dive. So Legend dives and does grab a War Factory. Talked about this here. The big thing early on is Yuri trying to get through the early game and staying alive. So the Soviet player doing everything they can just to try to slow that down a little bit is big. Um, so, the genetic mutator, uh, oftentimes you hear someone talking, complaining about the Yuri economy being OP. The genetic mutator is kind of like free money. The slaves do respawn, so you genetic mutate the slaves, you grind the brutes, and you get a nice little chunk of money. Um, which can be difficult once the super weapons are out. Iron Curtain, though, of course, out for Marco. Both super weapons out now for, uh, for Legend. And now, oh, both super weapons. So all super weapons for all four players. My layer on the bottom right is incorrect. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, we do, both players have both super weapons out, which is very common in, uh, in Yuri games to start seeing the Psychic Dominator and Nuke exchanged. Um, okay, so neither player too much offensive value. Did, Legend did get in and grab that War Factory, and yeah, not, not really much. Now the discs, once the discs start pouring out, once, uh, once uh, the Yuri player has the economy for that, things can get a little bit tricky, but it's never really, there isn't like a, a really a winning position. You know, as soon as if both players have their super weapons and are still pumping with good economies, um, yeah, the show is going to be rolling on here. So Iron Curtain ready now for Legend. Now the big thing with, you know, the Iron Curtains, you want to use them good. You, you want to get an effective Iron Curtain. It's huge. Iron Curtains, the drones, maybe a little early, maybe not. What's he going to get done here? And again, trying to take out, yeah, the Masterminds, the Mags. Yeah, that's a pretty good, pretty good drone hit there. Yeah, pretty good drone hit. I think that Mastermind's going to pop as well. Yeah, so the drone's pretty good hit. Now let's see what Legend can get done behind it. Rhino's shifting up to the top right here. Maybe we try to come down. Uh, maybe try to go with those War Factories. Are we going to see a... Ba oh, he's got it. So he's got a group to defend. So he's leaving his Flak Tracks at home to defend. Rhino's now down the right side. These War Factories now uncontested. Marco going for an MCV move. Marco not really responding to this backside. A, tire, a tower comes out, but that's not going to be enough. Now four Masterminds coming. These Rhinos are going to be in a lot of trouble here. Yeah, he's going to need to pull out. It's a lot of Masterminds. So two War Factories. That's the kind of value that Legend needs to be getting in this position. He's got to be pretty happy with that attack. Two War Factories. Now the drone's in to handle the Masterminds. Ooh, and Marco's slow on the click. All four Masterminds get uh, get droned. So the Rhinos, these Rhinos are going to be able to come back in again. Um... It's so funny, again, guys, this is a blind map. These guys, no one had ever seen this map prior to day, today except Polly. Shout out to Polly who made the map and myself. Um, so to see these guys, like the MCV moves, and already they're dialed in on this map after a few games. And uh, as they, I guess that's what you expect from the top level. This army's... Oh, this is GG's. This is GG's. Oh my god, Legend pouring through right now. I, I kind of lost track of Legend's back end there a little bit. Uh, those masterminds, a couple of those drone hits from Legend putting him way ahead here. Now the Iron Curtain out as well for Legend. Um... 
these lo these positions can still be annoying as long as there's masterminds out. Wacky things can happen, but he is gonna get he's gonna get a lot done here. The battle lab and the and the uh, uh, psychic dominator go down. Yeah, still uncontested. The MCV's got to be going next. No more masterminds left. Um, the discs. Oh, a tower comes out. Nuke coming though. Nuke comes, grabs a war factory, grabs the grinder. Oh, oh, the MCV stays alive. <laughs> oh, he's got two MCVs. Marco has two MCVs. Does Marco have any counterpunch potential? Marco just, Marco's got to be pretty much screwed in this position here. Um, so now these are Legends tanks coming back. Or, yeah, Legends tanks coming back at him. Remember, don't do this. These are your brothers. No. Uh, that tower, yeah, so these, uh, these, that's a bit annoying to have to deal with your own elite rhino is a bit, is a bit annoying here, but they are low health, not going to matter. So the Brutes now coming in for Marco. Marco pulling out all the stops here, just sending whatever he can, trying to get some kind of offensive value. Uh, you see him kind of dancing around here, just kind of doing this equation and realizing, um, there's just really not much, much for Marco to do in this position. Yep, so Marco gonna lose his army here, and Legend, yeah, Legend, Legend Comfortable sitting back. He has another Iron Curtain coming. Uh, Marco has these two MCVs. You know, he's, he's rebuilt his battle lab. He's building, now going defensive, building these Psychic Towers, which is a bit annoying. Oh, Legend, nice. Iron Curtain gets quite a few Rhinos in that group. Um, the Brutes, yeah, so many flag tracks now. Uh, yeah, so, so Legend, this guy has to be the beginning of the end, but, um... I like Marco. I like Marco uh, making Legend convert this position, especially in a longer series like this. It's not just about the the individual battle, right? It's about the war and uh, frustrating your opponent. Like if you're if you're way down, if your opponent thinks that you're gonna lose, but you keep failing to to end the game, right? If you keep checking them but failing to checkmate, um, it can kind of wear on you. It can kind of get a bit annoying. So um, I like Marco forcing it. And Marco, Marco's this is a little nice bundle. Marco's still a. Uh, Marco's, Marco's on five War Factories. Man, I, I thought for a second there, it's difficult to assess Yuri sometimes. I don't watch a lot of Yuri, so sometimes I forget what just a few Psychic Towers and Masterminds can do defensively. Um, and Marco looking for the Counterpunch, man. But again, the drone's just getting so much value for Legend here. Um, and uh, the big thing was uh, was uh, Marco losing that Psychic Dominator. The Psychic Dominator, major super weapon for, for Yuri, he can get so much done. Uh, he grabs, he goes in and grabs those Desolators. Oh, that's so annoying. Oh, those Desolators are coming at... Oh, my God. Oh, Legend has to get out of there. Okay, I thought those Desolators... I thought Legend might be somewhere else for a second. Mastermind goes down. Now the Lasher's on the gas. Gonna need to go on the run. Um, yeah, Marco going full Cockroach, man. It's not enough to squash him. You need to, you need to, you need to cut his head off and start him on fire. Tower comes out right by the grinder. Not gonna matter. Lasher's going down now. Yeah. So Legend does take it home number six now uh, again it is best of seven so if legend wins this we go to a match point we get ourselves a barn burner if marco wins this he takes it home let's see how you guys were feeling about this I one at the beginning the of the game 82 percent of you guys on the goat only 20 percent of you guys uh legend believers here legend came kicking down the gate early on man legends allied looking op uh but yeah marco just uh pulled out a couple a couple really really um, really, really incredible moves. And it's, you know, it's funny in a series, there's so many different things that can happen in a series, right? You can have a series where one player makes mistakes like, oh, like, and, and it's always kind of annoying to say that, you know, you have kind of players who always say that, like the mentality of like the only person who can beat me is myself. And no, and no matter what, if they lose, it's because they did something wrong. Um, but, uh, but you know, guys like this, it's, it's fun to see because they both are capable of making mistakes, but really at this top level, it's about not making those mistakes. And, um, and capitalizing on your opponent when they make those mistakes. And so, so far in the series, I don't think Legend's done that many things wrong, realistically. A couple of those points that were really close, they weren't really Legend blundering. They were just Marco uh, making some really, really, um, you know, uh, big brain moves that uh, that got him a couple more points on the board here. But, yeah, anyway, the scoreboard, very, very close. Uh, nice back and forth so far. Legend now with Yuri. Legend with Yuri and Marco, of course, with Soviet, his preferred faction here. Um, but Legend, again, Legend, competent Yuri player. We'll see what he can get done here. Uh, some wacky stuff can happen with Yuri. So Marco going to open a batch of conscripts here and send them downfield. Uh, Gats can counter these nicely. Uh, and a Gat in a bunker, of course. A nice defensive move as well. They might be able to edge out that bunker, though. Get on the backside and take that barracks if they're lucky here. Oh, the initiate's in the house. Yeah, so not much going to come from those conscripts, it doesn't look like. Uh, conscripts still uncontested here from Marco. Ooh, and now just out of range of the bunker. 
And now he has to bring the miner in to defend. Oh, the power plant goes down. And I like this. Marco says, all right, I've had enough. I'm not messing around anymore. I'm going right downfield. We talked about that before. Yuri, obviously, the key to success for Yuri um, is getting established early on. They can struggle a little bit with their economy to start the game. That power plant's huge. Difficult to appreciate. Going low power like that slows down your whole production early game, forces you to cancel what you were doing, build a power plant, rejuice it up. Yuri has to melt humans into their power plants. What exactly is the story there? They're, they're grinding up humans and making them into power juice. Weird. It's actually kind of cool, to be honest, as far as, like, fantasy world building goes. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so that's what you want. The Soviet players, so Marco there, able to go downfield, a couple rhinos and a handful of conscripts, take out a power plant, and keep the action, uh, keep Legend a little bit distracted. Very nice. Legend now over to Battle Lab. Battle Lab out now for Legend. His economy is holding steady. Marco downfield with a couple rhinos, looking to make something happen. Death and uh, early Battle Lab from Marco as well at the three-minute mark. Both players on Battle Lab Tech now. Mag and Gat downfield on this side. Couple of rhinos killing polar bears top right, and desolators to uh, to help hold this position. Now the Yuri player, one really annoying thing is the mags. Uh, you guys, the lower level might not be familiar with the mag unit, but the mag's ability to lift units and then drop them, uh, it can be used on maps like this with water or with cliffs. You can drop, you go in early with mags, and you harass the enemy miners. You can try to lift a miner, drop it on a refinery, it'll take out the refinery, it'll take out the miner. Um, a good Yuri player and his ability to harass your economy early on with mags um, is incredibly annoying and incredibly devastating when done effectively. So that's why you see Marco here at all the gates with his desolators, trying to keep this uh, preliminary force out of, uh, out of his base. Uh, so uh, MCV move here from Legend, gonna go towards the center it looks like. Oh, Legend headed. Legend heading downfield, boys. Legend, Legend's gonna head downfield here. His MCV now getting now getting uh, desoed. Legend heads right into the enemy base here. He controls both those desolators, so he's gonna send. Oh, he's just gonna grind the desolators, and now a tower's out. So the Yuri MCV stuff can get really interesting. Now you see a lot of players using the Yuri Prime to take an enemy building and then building psychic towers, building grinders, stuff like that. But the MCV move or multiple MC MCV is also nice. And now the base walk and Legend putting on a show for us, boys. Now Legend in in uh, in his base. Kirov out. Oh, they Kirov from Marco. Was that the perfect rock for this scissors? We shall see. This forward Kirov going to be right in Legend's base here. Uh, but I love that battle bunker, the psychic tower, and the grinder. And the grinder is really the juicer in this position because as Legend takes over units, he can grind them right away to prevent his uh, mind control units from getting overloaded. Uh, which is which is huge. Ooh, this Iron Curtain, though, is going to be devastating. I kind of lost track of Marco's super weapons there. Iron Curtain's going to be pretty tough. Um, I like this Wily e. Coyote move from Legend. I like that he's getting weird. I don't know if it's going to work. I think this Kirov's going to cause a lot of issues. So he's targeting the Gat now. When that Gat goes down, now there's no anti-air in this, in this base. Um, so you, this Kirov's going to be devastating. Oh, and the drone on the backside. The Masterminds, as they come, are getting droned. Uh, Legend trying to make something happen here. Uh, the gat, the gat's out. Oh, that Kirov goes down. So Marco got a little bit distracted there. He had a lot going on and didn't quite get the value he needed out of that, uh, out of that Kirov. But it was, um, it, it took down the defenses and opened things up for these rhinos, which is probably going to be more than enough. Psychic Tower out now, and the mag's out. And Legend does hold this position. Oh my god, you guys. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. All right. So now the forward barracks. So the forward barracks, this is a heads up move. You're throwing conscripts into the psychic tower to try to overload the mastermind units. These cheap units like conscripts are perfect for this. I love that forward barracks from Marco to get, just send those conscripts right down as fodder. Uh, try to open things up again for his rhinos. Legend throwing everything and the kitchen sink uh, at Marco right now. But Marco's cold blooded, man. Uh, when we get our heartbeat monitors on the players, uh, which is one of my things we're going to do when Red Bull sponsors us. We're going to have heartbeat monitors. We'll see how the player's heart beats. Marco in these positions, Marco's heartbeat goes down. The kid's cold-blooded, man. He's got ice in his veins. He likes us. He thrives in these positions. You go crazy on him. He doesn't say, oh, my God, what's going on? He just chills. He chills. And uh, that's exactly what you need in these in these positions like this. Uh, the grinder goes down, so now this is a bit tricky. These masterminds are overloaded. But the MCV, of course, goes down as well. Uh, he doesn't have another MCV, does he? No, he doesn't. So, still has a foothold in this position. Oh, wait, wait, what? Wait, what? Legend now uncontested? Wait, is this army about to get things done? Is Legend about to make this happen? I was just tie hyping Marco up. I thought Marco was cold blooded. I thought Marco didn't fit. Is he going to use a defensive nuke? I think the defensive nuke's the move, boys. 
Oh, so he does take out this expansion and finally gets rid of that foothold here in the center. And Marco does hold by the skin of his teeth all of those rhinos on one tick of health right now. Um, and Legend, Legend's got 5k in the bank. Oh, so now Legend using the mags to drop the tanks in the water. Love that. Love that, boys. Love that. The conscripts here can be very, very annoying. They're going to overload that mass round if he's not careful. Uh, but the Desolator's actually taking him out. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay. So, what do, what's, the, what's the head count right now? What do we know? Does anyone know what's going on? That's the question. Does anyone know what's going on right now? All right. Mastermind. Gap. Yeah, mags on the backside. What can they do? Iron Curtain's coming. Is there any way for him to get in and take out that Iron Curtain? Marco's got a nice little bundle of Rhinos AFK on back left now, and that Iron Curtain could be good. Marco's got to be looking to try to get downfield once he holds here, and he's got to get some offensive value. But although, as I say that, that's not actually not true, because um, Legend... Oh... Oh, Legend. Oh, Legend had a grinder. I always forget. Yuri's uh, service depot on the tech tree is their grinder. So he had a grinder. He rebuilt that MCV. He didn't have that before, right? He moved his primary MCV. It's a rebuilt MCV. Drones on the top side wreaking havoc. And Legend is going to, with that, I think the action is finally going to shift uh, to Legend's side of the map. But um, with that being said, Legend's getting sneaky on the backside. He's got some lashers going hunting top, uh, top side. Marco's got some drones and rhinos to defend. Marco pushing in now. Iron Curtain. Going to go out that power plant. Uh, is there no no battle lab right now? So no force shield. So the MCV is definitely going down. Ooh, they get on the backside. Oh, they get the Iron Curtain. But a second too late. Obviously, Marco already got that off downfield. Uh, this, this group? Ah, no mastermind there. So yeah, he's going to be able to hold that. And finally is going to edge his way through. And ledge... <laughs> Oh my god, you guys. You love to see it. You love to see it. And Legend uh, does live to fight another day, but you look at this. Uh, this is a Soviet powerhouse right now. He's got the nuke. He did lose the Iron Curtain, and which gives you know Legend a few more seconds. Um, and Legend builds another MCV. <laughs> oh my god, Yuri builds an MCV. So Legend out with his third MCV now. Legend's got an economy behind him, boys, and, he's, and he heads back downfield. <laughs> the drones, the drones, the drones. You see him trying to use the mag to juggle these drones. Of course, that's not an automatic feature of these tanks. Uh, when you see a unit juggling like that, they're having to individual cl individually click and target separately. Nuke coming. He does get the cell on one war factory, but yeah, the nukes now. And Marco... Um, Marco might be the kind of guy who wants to end this one with a curb stomping, but uh, Marco knows at this point he can pretty much sit back and just get value out of his Iron Curtains and his nukes and win this game. Uh, but uh, Legend, <laughs> Legend certainly making it as difficult as possible. Um, <laughs> all right, what do you guys think? Is this the final push here? Is this the final push? Uh, Legend, Legend going mags instead of masterminds. He really needs a mastermind in this group here. Um, this is just. You know, at some point when you get into the mid-late game, the question is, like, if you haven't gotten offensive value, um, you know, your opponent's just going to be producing too heavily, right? So now you see Legend on one War Factory, Marco on uh, five. You know, it's just, like, it's very difficult. Uh, these Brutes... Oh, the Conscript's doing work. You love to see that. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Man, okay, so as we wrap up the series, guys, uh, yeah, a big shout out to Legend and Marco for putting on a show for us here today, and a big shout out to Polly, Polly the map maker. Um, he put this map together for us. We're going to be doing more of these guys as Polly. He makes a lot of these uh, tournament maps that go into quick match, uh, these pro level maps like this. So I think as he comes out with new ones, instead of just releasing them to the public, I think we'll test them like this, make, get a couple good uh, killers in here, make them play the map blind, put on a good show for us. I think that's a fun way to do it, keep things exciting. So, Marco, Marco, Marco the GOAT does take it home. Uh, some of the best players to ever do it. Big shout out to both those players for putting on a good show for us. There's a reason we call Marco the final boss. Um, but, uh, but yeah, big shout out, big shout out to Legend. Um, uh, I mean, Le Legend's, Le Legend's always fun, man. You know, Marco and Legend... You know, this community, this whole project for me, this is my 15th month running a tournament. Um, and I've just had, I've had a lot of people help me tremendously. Uh, we've had a lot of, uh, you know, all the, this whole CNC net community that we play online, right? It's not officially supported. It's all ran by volunteers. So it's a big group project around here. A uh, lot, a lot of people being selfless and helpful. Uh
Sonic. 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 Sonic.